All right, welcome everyone. Um, this is a scripture that has been weighing on me for the past 24 hours. And I think it just really follows up our last seven days of what the, uh, on the, what if I had seven days to prepare, what would I do? And that really kind of led us through all of the, how to get our spiritual house in order and what do we need to do? And I had read something by another person who, who used this ver who's this scripture in reference to something that she'd wrote. And I was like, oh, well, what does it say? And as I began to read it, I just was, I was just blown away. And so no, you're not going to see my picture. It just is this because we need to understand that our time is precious. You know, we did our seven days, but we have to continually every single day seek to follow the Lord with everything that we have. So um, we are going to be in Second Kings in chapter 17. So, and I'm reading out of the ESV version. So I'm going to start in, um, hmm, I'm going to just start right at the beginning. It says in the 12th year of Uzzah, king of Judah, Hosea, the son of Ella. So if I get names wrong, just bear with me. Okay. I'm going to read them fast and maybe we won't know. Began to re reign in Samaria over Israel and he reigned for nine years. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, yet not as the kings of Israel who were before him. Against him came up Shalmazar, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his vassal and paid him in tribute. But the king of Assyria found treachery in him, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and offered him in no tribute to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria invaded all the land and came to Samaria, and for three years he besieged it. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of, the king of Assyria captured Samaria, and he carried the Israelites away to Assyria and placed them in Halah, and on the harbor, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. Verse seven, and this occurred because the people of Israel had sinned against the Lord, their God, and had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, the king, as he had and had feared other gods and walked in customs of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel and in the customs that the kings of Israel had practiced. The people of Israel did secretly against the Lord their God things that were not right. Can I just say, there is nothing that we can do that's secret from the Lord. We can't hide anything from the Lord. Okay, so um, verse 9. And the people of Israel did secretly against the Lord things they knew were not right. They built for themselves high places in all their towns from watchtower to fortified city. They set up for themselves pillars and ashram poles on every high hill and under every green tree. And there made offerings on all the high places as the nations did whom the Lord carried away before them. And they did wicked things provoking the Lord to anger. And they served idols of which the Lord said to them, you shall not do this. Yet the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes in accordance with all the law that I commanded your fathers and that I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Verse 14, but they would not listen. They were stubborn as their fathers had been who did not believe in the Lord, their God. They despised his statutes and his covenants that he'd made with their fathers and warnings he gave them. They went after false idols and became false, and they followed the nations that were around them, concerning whom the Lord had commanded them that they shouldn't do like them. And they abandoned all the commandments of the Lord their God and made for themselves metal images of two calves 
and made an Asherah pole and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. Verse 17, and they burned their sons and their daughters as offerings and used divination and omens and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. None was left but the tribe of Judah only. Verse 19, Judah also did not keep the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in customs that Israel had introduced. And the Lord rejected all the descendants of Israel and afflicted them and gave them into the hands of plunderers until he had cast them out of their sight. When he had torn Israel from the house of David, they made Jeroboam the son of a Nebuch king. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them commit great sin. The people of Israel walked in all the sins that Jeroboam did. They did not depart from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight. He had spoken by all of his servants, the prophets. So Israel was exiled from their own land to Assyria until this day. When we don't follow the commandments of God, there are consequences, judgments. I know so many people who just think it's not that way. And yet here in God's word, we read his people whom he parted the Red Sea, who he delivered from the hands of Pharaoh, who set them up in this land, departed and did wickedness and followed other gods and made idols and did horrific things. And we're doing the same thing here. And the Lord allowed Assyria to invade their land, and for three years he besieged it. Three years. Three years. And I know people who say they follow Christ, and yet they support things that are 100% contrary to God's words. They read things like this in, in, um, Verse 17, and they burn their sons and daughters as offerings, and they're horrified by that. And yet they would stand up and declare that it's a woman's right to choose. How is that any different than what happened right here in this word? Why are we horrified by one and acceptance of another? We must get our spiritual houses in order. We must turn from our wicked ways. We quote that so often. If my people, if my people would pray and we pass over that line and turn from their wicked ways. Lord, show us what wickedness is in us so we may repent and turn from that. We only have this life and not one of us know the moment that our life will end. But the moment that life ends, our eternity begins. And we don't get to choose then. We have to choose now who we're going to serve. We can read in in 2 Kings that their choices of whom they were serving, because they weren't serving the Lord. They were serving everything but the Lord. They did what they wanted to do. 
Isn't that what this said? And um, oh, where is it? And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did what he wanted to do. And that's how we live. And we must stop. Father, I pray that we would truly turn from our wicked ways, that we would seek you. Holy Spirit, show us what path that needs to change in our heart. Direct our steps. And Father, I ask that blinders would come off and our hearts would be seared by what what breaks yours, Father? And we would turn from our wicked ways and we would turn back to you, Lord. But all to you. We would surrender, Lord God. Amen.